Welcome back to The Couch Crocheter, episode 34. I went and purchased more yarn, and then I want to share some whips that I have. Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of The Couch Crocheter, episode 34. I went to Walmart to get some cat litter, and I ended up with yarn and cat litter. And then I wanted to show you two projects that I started um, and I'll tell the story about those once I go over my little mini haul from Walmart. I went down the aisle um, because I did need one another one of these because I started working on a project, which I'll go over in just a moment. And then while I was down the aisle, you know, my eyes were open, obviously, and I was looking at some stuff. Um, and I came across this um, Red Heart Super Saver Jumbo Stripes. Now, this is not a color that I ever saw before. I don't know if it's new or just my Walmart never had it. I don't keep up on all of the um, new and upcoming yarns most of the time. Um, if I see it and I like it and it speaks to me, then I get it. Um, so I never saw this one before at that Walmart, so I thought I'd pick it up. Um, and I'll go over the specs of this one also in just a moment because I did start a project with this one as well. So those are the only things that I picked up at Walmart was two skeins of the Sutherland stripes from Red Heart Jumbo stripes and then one of this teal. So I was sitting up here at headquarters the other day and I just want to make sure I start at the right spot here in my trusty busty book, which has my whips and my FOs and my um, UFOs, unfinished, yeah, UFOs. <laughs> um, so now I'll go over the specs of both of the yarns that I'm using. So I was sitting up here at headquarters the other day and I did not have anything to do other than finish the yep yips. And I do have two bags of shame, as I call my uh, UFOs or my whips. I guess it would be UFOs, unfinished objects. Um, I do have two bags over here sitting on the floor, uh, my bags of shame that I have not worked on. And I have not put the eyeballs and the antennas on the yip yips. I don't know why I'm dragging my feet with this, but I am. It will eventually get done. I've had, as you guys know, one heck of a last three to four weeks. Um, so I'm just everywhere. I'm everywhere. <laughs> with my crochet, with my videos, with my life. It's just everywhere right now. But I'm trying. <laughs> okay, so back to the yarn. Back to uh, works in progress. So I was sitting up here and I wasn't working on anything. And I was just staring at my yarn. And I was up here for like four hours. And nothing spoke to me. And I just didn't. And I guess I lost my crojo for a little while. Then I came up the second day and I was sitting up here and I was watching more videos and, um, you know, I was just staring at my yarn and for whatever reason at this particular moment, um, this stuff jumped out at me. Now I know you guys have seen this. I just went over this one with you, but I just purchased a second one from Walmart. This you guys already have seen, um, I think last video or two videos ago. Might have been just last video, might even have been three videos ago, not that long ago. So it spoke to me and it said that it wanted to be graying squares. So then while I was watching videos on YouTube, you know, I got up off the couch and I went over and I grabbed these off the, off the wall. Um, and I came over and sat on the couch and I'm flipping through the videos of, you know, granny squares and. I was like, oh my gosh, do I really want to do this? Like, what's wrong with you? Like, you hate sewing things together. Like, that is not fun for you. It's going to be a big project, whatever it's going to be, because it's granny squares. Um, you know, are you crazy right now? Like, what's going on? <laughs> You're going to take on this project. So I'm flipping through, and I came across Fiber Spider, who I get a lot of patterns from, and I adore him. Um, he's very creative. He's um, very, his way of teaching is, is wonderful. I never struggle with any of his tutorials or any of his patterns. The stuff that he comes up with is just gorgeous and amazing. And I might have a small yarny crush on him. Um, <laughs> so uh, Greg came across my feed 
when I put in just granny square projects, you know, crochet granny square projects, it came across as recommended and it said, join as you go. And I thought, okay, that means I don't have a ton of sewing to do. Maybe I'll dive into this and see what happens. So I'm making a granny square blanket and I am following fiber spider who is Greg, um, his tutorial as to how uh, it is called join as you go granny squares. And then in the beginning of the tutorial, he does a little explanation of what's going to go on and how you start it and draws this little, um, uh, graph, not graph, this little drawing of like, you know, arrows and boxes and really explains it very well. But then he, um, shares with us, that he actually, I don't know if Debbie reached out to him or he reached out to Debbie or how this came about. Um, but he got the idea from Debbie, the Canadian crotcheter who, hi Debbie. Um, thank you for this, by the way, because it is amazing and I love it. So apparently how he says it is that they commingled together she already had this like figured out and all mathematically done and you know figured out the stitches and the counts and where to go and with who and he, she sent over an email i think and explained it to um fiber spider and then fiber spider turned around and um did a tutorial on her explanation on how to join granny squares so I hope that you guys followed that and I didn't lose you. <laughs> so thanks to Debbie from the Canadian Crotcher for coming up with this genius idea. And thank you, Greg. Hi, Greg, from the um, Fiber Spider for making a tutorial that I can understand. So here it is. Um, and I'll insert a picture here on the back of the couch laid out as far as the progress that I've done. Um, and I'm going to go back to my book here because I have all the details written down. Um, it is going to be a granny square blanket. I'm thinking it's going to be eight by nine. That is nine long and eight across. I do want it a little longer than I do um, wider. Um, so I am using a J hook. And so far, I think I'm going to use um, two of this teal, which is why I went out and got another one from Walmart. And so far, I have used one, and I'd say maybe a half, maybe not quite um, a half of the blue multi. I have made um, 14 connecting squares, and these are the 14 squares that I originally made. And I just wanted to see if I could follow the tutorial, even though I know Fiber Spider is awesome at teaching me stuff. Um, I just wanted to see how easy it was, whether it was going to be frustrating for me how it was going to work up, what it was going to look like, if I can get the tension right so it didn't all ball up and, you know, look like a knotted mess. Um, so I did 14 squares and then joined them all together. Then I thought, okay, I'm going to stop joining literally as I go and just make up squares, which um, I haven't tucked this end in yet. But look, guys, I'm tucking in ends. Aren't you proud? Uh, so here's what the squares look like before they're connected. Um, and I'm not going to try to describe to you how this works up. Please go visit um, Fiber Spider's video and I'll link that down below. And I will also link the channel of Debbie of the Canadian Crotcheter, even though I don't think she has, she may have mentioned this. Um, I don't think she has a tutorial about it. I might have to check up on that, but I don't think she does. Um, and again, I have not watched, you know, every video of hers yet from beginning to end to, um, try to have an idea of where this came from or how she came up with this or how it transpired. Um, but I'll link her below and then I'll link fiber spider below. Anywho, here's the square before they are connected. So in my trusty busty, not fancy whatsoever, um, shame, project of shame bags, as I'm calling them. I have a whole lot of squares done. I'm not going to show them all to you. They're granny squares. <laughs> so in the bag, I have 44 of them done. So if I truly do an eight by nine, um, nine long, eight wide, 
So then I guess it's nine by eight. Um, that'll be 72 squares total. With the 14 that's connected, the 44 that I've done, including this guy, I considered him done. I only have 14 more squares to make. So I do believe that I will definitely be able to get 14 squares out of this second one, which means then I still have, I believe, and I might've taken him with me already. Oh, he's already in the bag. <laughs> Boy, I'm so organized right now. I don't even know what to do with myself. Um, I'm not going to need that third one. So I'm going to have an extra one of these that later in the, you know, lifetime, I have something else I can do with it. Okay, so I went over, well, we'll go over the specs of the teal first because that's the one I've written down first. <clears throat> it is mainstay. It is called 100% acrylic yarn. Uh, I'll show you the color. It is 198.4 grams, 7 ounces, 397 yards, or uh, 363 meters. The color is called teal. I do believe I am going to need two of them for this project, but so far I've gotten 14 squares attached and you see how much I've left. Um, it is 100% acrylic um, as Greg's recommendation and I believe this yarn's recommendation. Nope. So the yarn recommendation is a size I or size nine um, crochet hook or the same in needle size. It is considered a four um, weight medium. It is worsted, made in India. It is machine washable and tumble dry. But for this project, as um, Greg suggested, I used a J hook and I'm not sad whatsoever that I used a J hook. Um, I'm loving it. I'm absolutely loving the squares. Um, you know, I did know how to do a granny square, but he suggests doing three in the corners and one in between. Now, normally when I do a granny square, I do no in between and two in the corners. So he did suggest that. So I did that. And then, um, the, you know, the way that Debbie designed and Craig did the tutorial for it. I'm really loving this, guys. Really, 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 really loving this. And I dreaded doing granny squares. I love doing them as squares and I love learning new granny squares and different granny squares, um, but I don't like sewing, which is why I think I'm having a problem finishing the Yip Yips, because to me, I have to sew them on, and then, you know, it's other stuff that I have to do other than just crochet, and I need to get to it. I know, I know, I know. I'm getting there. Anywho, specs on this guy. So here we are, and I'm sorry, he's all, you know, used, but, you know, it's okay. Um, this is a mainstay yarn, medium four. The grammage on this one is 141.7, um, five ounces or 285 yards, 260 meters. This color is considered multi, um, sorry, blue multi. Um, I wrote down that I wasn't sure if I was going to use two or three, but I'm going to have to amend this. I am probably just going to use two and I'll probably have a little bit left over. Um, I am using a J hook. This is also made in India. Washing instructions for both of them is machine wash and tumble dry. Um, so that is that work in progress. Along with my other two over here that I'm not even going to show you. Because I already showed you them and I got no progress on them. It's one of Crystal's chunky cows that I have to add fringe to and her... Tutorial number is 269 for that, and I've showed it, I think, twice already as uh, works in progress, and I'm just not going to show you again. And then the other one is the rice stitch that I started because I didn't have any other project going, and I needed something to do that wasn't mindful, um, and I don't know what that's inspiring to be, and I just have put it aside. It's probably going to get frogged, to be quite honest. I just don't have the heart to frog it quite yet. So, away with the squares, and away with green. So, I was up at headquarters yesterday, oh sugar, and I forgot, nope, it wasn't yesterday, it was the day before, and I left here, and we went home, and I took a nap, and then I went to work, 
and I went to go in the back of Honey's car, Matt's car, because he drops me off at work because of right down the street we from work, from each other. We both work third, less gas, you know, less wear and tear on either or car. So we carpool together. So he drops me off and I go to get in the back seat, which is where I usually keep my ginormous sew bag, which I'll show you. And I'm not even sure how I missed this. It is a Vera Bradley. It is huge. I don't know how I ended up leaving this up here at headquarters and totally forgetting it. Like, I don't even know, but I did. So I went to work with no laptop, no crochet project. It was the most boring day at work that I've ever had in my whole entire life. And usually my job is like pretty happening um, at night, believe it or not, because of their circumstances um, at my job. And I don't have a lot of time, you know, all night to crochet. I don't want to get it twisted. That's not my job, even though I wish it was. Um, I do have other aspects of my job responsibilities that I do put forth and foremost, and I do get them done. And if there is downtime, I do crochet. So I had no laptop. I had no crochet project started um, because it was here at headquarters. So I'm like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? So I don't even know where I got the needle from. I don't even know. This was still in the back of the car from the Walmart trip. Thank God that I picked this up. <laughs> so I started another project because mine that I was working on was here at headquarters and I did not want to be like bored out of my mind at work. So I started another project. <clears throat> Hold on one second, guys. And I don't know if you guys know, and I don't know if I even ever shared this with you. And if I didn't, that's probably why you don't know. I am not a girl. And this is something new to me. In the three and some odd years that I've been um, crocheting, I'm not usually one that has more than one work in progress. Um, when I start something, I like to see it from beginning to end. And I like to make sure that it's perfect. And I like to put all of my uh, creativity and love and devotion into one project. So I'm not usually one for multiple projects, which is maybe why I don't have a lot of work in progress videos. Um, but as of like the last three months, four months, boy, I have just been, my brain has just been all over the place. Like I can't keep things in there. I can't <laughs> keep focused. It has just been all over the place. So now that I'm done with that little did you know about me? Um, it is very odd for me to have more than one work in progress. So now my time and devotion is going to be finishing probably this first because I believe it is going to be faster. This is going to be my to go project. Um, the granny square blanket is going to be my headquarters project because before actually I am so lying before I did, I had a to go project that was small that I can take with me. And then I had the bigger projects like the blankets for home. But to me, it is definitely two works in progress. Yes, it is. Absolutely. But to me, it wasn't because one's portable and the other one was not. Um, and, you know, whenever you're out and about and you have five minutes, you know, there's a, a hook in my hand and I'm working on something. Um, but normally I don't have two projects that I carry around with me or two projects that I just have to work at at home. Um, so I guess I am okay. Now that I've talked that out with you guys, I guess it is okay because this is my to-go project and that's my headquarters project. So that's what I have going on as far as works in progress. Um, oh, you know what? I didn't go over anything of this. <laughs> So this is Red Heart Super Saver Stripes. And again, I know I mentioned, but I've never seen this color. I've never seen this at Walmart, so I picked it up. And this is a little used, and I'm sorry, the other skein of this is in the car, and it's too hot to run outside and go get it right now. So you just have to deal with this like little half-used thing. It is a number four weight. The grams is 283 grams. It is 10 ounces or 482 yards which equals 440 meters. The color is Sutherland Stripes, 
and I'm really loving it. It has like a, a shimmery hue to it. Um, I am loving it. And I will insert a picture here of the uh, unfinished object and its progress on the back of the couch so you guys can see it a little bit more detailed. Uh, I did put down, I wasn't sure if I was going to use one or two skeins. I think from the size that I see that it is now, I think I'm going to need two skeins. Um, it is going to be blocked, so it will stretch out a little bit more. Excuse me. So the wave stitch, um, detail is seen a little bit more. Um, but I think I am going to use both of them. It is 100% acrylic. I did use a K hook. Um, and this hook recommended size is a I-9 or a needle size of a 5 millimeter or a US-8. Um, but I decided to go with a K-hook. Um, and this yarn is made in the USA. Woohoo! Go Red Heart Jumbo Stripe Super Saver. Uh, it is machine washable and dryable, which is nice. Um... So the pattern that I got this from is Donna Wolf from Nastasia, and it is called How to Crochet the Wave Stitch. It is super, super simple, super, super easy. Um, you do have to count your stitches as you go um, at first, or at least I had to. But then once you like, you know, go on and on and on with it, you kind of get like a visual where one should switch over from a slip stitch to a half double crochet. Um, there was a few times where I wasn't um, counting and I did mess up and I noticed like as I was going back because it is a two row repeat. I'm sorry, it is a four row repeat because there's this one and then you mirror that one, and then this one in the mirror, that one. So you do the same for two rows, and then do the same again for two more rows, and then go back to the first, do the same on the two rows, if that made any sense. I'm going to link it down below. Um, she describes it. She explains it. Um, Donna is another one that I do love getting some of the patterns from. Um, she's another one who just tells me exactly where I need to stick it where and how many times and explains stuff as she goes, which is nice and refreshing. Uh, so she's another one that I do like to get my patterns from. So guys, that is all I have as far as my little mini uh, Walmart haul and my now two works in progress. Um, so the last thing I'm going to finish up with is my daily reading from Melody uh, Bitai. Uh, it is called Journey to the Heart, Daily Meditations for the Path to Freeing Your Soul. And I do believe we are on day 8, or January 8th, sorry, not day 8, January 8th. And this one's a little bit longer than the last couple ones, uh, but we're just going to read through and see what she's got to tell me today. January 8th, love yourself until it's real. What does it mean to love yourself? To do nice, nurturing things for and to yourself. Yes, sometimes. But love runs deeper than that. Self-love means loving and accepting yourself, your thoughts, beauty, emotions, your faults, imperfections, and flaws, your strengths, wit, wisdom, as well as your... as well as your particular and unique way of seeing the world. Loving yourself means accepting and loving each and every part of you and knowing that you're worthy, valuable, and lovable. It means loving and accepting yourself when you're surrounded by people who love you and during those times when you think everyone's gone away. During one of the darkest parts of my life, Al Franklin, a comedian and producer, asked me to write an introduction to the book he was writing. Stuart Smalley's Daily Meditation Book. I'm good enough, I'm smart enough, and doggone it, people like me. <laughs> I wasn't able to do such, I wasn't able to do much during that time in my life, except walk to my fax machine and tear off the curled up pages. 
I take the pages back to my bed, lie down, because I was too shattered to stand, and read them. I'd laugh a little at Stewart's outrageous behavior. But the pages made me smile about something else, too. Despite our search for sophisticated, sage advice and advanced learning, some, sometimes it helps to remember the simple wisdom of bumbling Stuart Smalley. Sometimes loving yourself means accepting yourself enough to tell yourself other people like and approve of us. Sometimes loving ourselves means approving of ourselves, even when they don't. It takes courage to stop cowering and open and openly love, accept and approve ourselves. Don't just say the words, love yourself until you experience that love. Guys, that's all I have for you today. Be safe, stay groovy, and until the next episode, I'll see you later. Bye.